Hello my beloved subscribers, it's Vitri Hong here and welcome to another episode of Vitri the Explorer. In this episode of my travel vlog series, I'm going to show you around the famous Borobudur Temple or Chandi Borobudur, which is located in Magelang, Central Java, Indonesia. It is the largest Buddhist temple in the world and one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Alright, let's go! When I was in Magelang for the first time in 1997, I went from Yogyakarta, but this time I went from Semarang to Magelang. Magelang is a beautiful city indeed. Here we are arriving the Borobudur Temple. This place is always crowded all year long with a lot of tourists from different countries. Well, which is normal if you consider the historical values and the amazing architecture. Local and foreign visitors will have to pay different prices. For local visitors, you have to pay 15,000 Indonesian rupiah to enter the Chandi or the temple area and an additional 75,000 Indonesian rupiah to officially go up to the temple. Meanwhile, for foreign visitors, they charge 25 US dollars are approximately 375 Indonesian rupiah for adults and 15 US dollars or approximately 225,000 rupiah for children up to 10 years old. There are 8 sessions in total per day with a quota of 150 persons per session. This is to ensure that the visitors are not overloaded in the temple area which could potentially damage some parts of the temple because as we know, it's an ancient site that we need to preserve. Yep, I got the schedule. As you can see here, it was still 7.33 a.m. But my schedule was at 11 a.m. So you can imagine how crowded it was, right? Let's stroll around the temple area to kill the time. Come explore with me when I tell you the history and facts of the famous Barabudur Temple. It was built in the 8th and 9th centuries AD during the era of Shalendra dynasty. It seems that Barabudur took at least 100 years to complete the temple construction and is thought to have been completed during the reign of King Samaratunga. The temple is meticulously designed with a precise geometric layout. Each level follows a symmetrical pattern from the base to the top, creating a harmonious and balanced structure. It is still not 11 a.m. yet, so let us explore the Borobudur Museum and Gallery now. Before being completely restored and preserved, a lot of unwanted things happened in Borobudur Temple. Some irresponsible people take Buddha statues to sell to antique collectors or to museums. Many parts of the temple were lost and diminished as a result of this. This is why many Buddha statues are headless. Apart from theft, the loss of statues and artifacts at Borobudur Temple could not be separated from the intervention of the Dutch is in this government. For example, in 1896, the King of Thailand visited Indonesia and expressed his intention to have several parts of the statue from his temple. The request was approved by the Dutch East Indies government. Finally, five statues of Buddha and some other pieces were brought to Thailand. This is gamelan, which is the traditional Indonesian percussion orchestra that is believed as a way of establishing a connection between humans and the universe. The Robert Temple was also rocked by an earthquake measuring 6.2 Richter scale on May 27, 2006. Even though the Yogyakarta earthquake almost destroyed the surrounding area, as I mentioned before, Magelang is very close to Yogyakarta. So of course, Barabara Temple was affected as well at that time. But despite that, this Buddhist temple remained firmly standing without any slightest move.
By the way, make sure to bring a bottle of water when you go up the temple since you might be dehydrated, especially when the weather is super hot. Foreign visitors will be given a bottle of water for free before going up. You can grab one of these travel guides before going up and the best thing is they are provided in many different languages for your convenience. Time to buy the temple entrance tickets. Each visitor will be given a bed like this plus a tote bag and a pair of special sleepers. You have to leave your shoes in the special cells provided in the shoes area and change to the slippers before going up. This is to help preserve the floor of the temple. Then let's head to the waiting area. Here we will be given another special briefing first before then being grouped with another visitors. Each group would be led by a tour guide. Don't worry, all the tour guides can speak English. But since there was no foreigner in my group, my guide spoke in Indonesian. Cuka, pemotongannya nanti langsung seperti ini. Dari atas. Ya? Dari atas. Dan ini disembunyikan. Oh. Ini tersembunyi di pondasi yang ditambahkan ini. Nanti ada satu section yang dibongkar. Yang dibongkarnya bukan kita, tapi sama pemerintah Jepang. Saat membongkar, nggak bisa bongkar, tapi pakai bom dibuka. Ini dihancurkan. Nanti nongol satu, kelopak teratainya terlihat. Oke, okay. uh, dengan konsep seperti ini, dulu uh, telah dibor sama UNESCO secara acak 68 dan kelipatannya di sekitar sini, terdapat endapan rawa, rawa air, ya, rawa. Jadi dulu kesimpulannya ada air mengeliling candi, seakan-akan patma yang ngapung di atas air, konsepnya. Ya, ya. Ah, flashback tahun 2006 menurut sejarah Jawa merapi, merbabu itu meletus maka yang terjadi seperti cerita Pompei di Italia itu Borobudur terkubur abu vulkanik penuhnya 800 tahun ah, pemerintahan Mataram Indukuno pindah ke Jawa Timur bikin Majapahit ya, Majapahit ah, 800 terkubur itu sebenarnya orang lokal mengetahui keberadaan Borobudur tapi orang Jawa percaya namanya Tahayul Tahayul kuat sekali Nah, maka 800 tahun tidak tersentuh sementara orang Eropa namanya Raffles, orang Inggris tak percaya tahayul, maka di Kali di Tepang itu namanya apa ini? pohon beringin yang buat orang Jawa sama orang Bali itu uh, sakral ya. buat orang Eropa nggak percaya itu namanya tahayul di Tepang aja ternyata apa namanya ketahayulan itu dibuat untuk me merawat Borobudur itu sendiri dari per apa namanya penjarahan betul setelah dibongkar sama orang Inggris itu 300 kepala raib dari Borobudur di maaf di Colong nah, sekarang buktinya jadi Inggris dan di Belanda Amsterdam ya di Borobudur tinggal 165 35 di museum lokal masih dalam tara pencocokan ulang yang di atas 165 acak Ya, jadi 200 tersisa, 300 dicolong Ada di Inggris dan di Belanda Dan yang lain ada di Itali, di Black Market Pernah diperjual belikan tahun 90-an Seharga 500 ribu pound sterling untuk satu kepala ya, Sekitar uh, 8,5 miliar tahun 90-an Itu ada official report atau laporan resmi dari UNESCO Mari kita cek yang kepala yang ada Ya, lewat sini untuk hemat energi 50% nanti kita baru naik yang 88 tangga ya Did you know this fruit? diambil ke Belanda untuk koleksi pribadi yang komplit habis seperti ini 
nanti yang sana tangan patah, leher patah, apa ini dari jari patah karena gempa kalau yang masalah ini ya, ini daerah paling arah uh, apa atas, bawah ya. Kalau ke bawah emang diambil. Kalau ke bawah itu Hah? Ah itu pertanyaan utama. Pahat bukan? Pahat. Pakai pahat pahat besi. Tapi pahat besinya tidak ditemukan. Biarpun ada arkeolog Belanda yang coba fokus mencari pahat yang digunakan orang Jawa pakai apa itu tidak ditemukan dengan cara bongkar ini saya di belakang ini ini tanah ya? Tidak ada satu harusnya ini kan penutupnya ini yang di belakang anda ini berada di pojokan corner itu dibongkar sama namanya Eiserman Eiserman itu orang Belanda ingin tahu alatnya apa tapi tidak satu alat pun ditemukan oke okay. ah, ada asumsi atau hipotesa dikatakan Orang Jawa dulu setelah menyelesaikan membuat borok budur dikumpulkan alatnya dibawa ke kreter Merapi, kreter itu di lebur ulang dengan tujuan tidak diduplikasi borok budur. Jadi yang kita sebut dengan apa namanya diskusi masterpiece, masterpiece satu-satunya dan tidak ada yang lain. Dan sampai sekarang para ahli pun masih bingung pakai apa. Gitu. Tapi ada petunjuk bekas-bekas cuakan pahat besi. Kan siap itu sekarang pernah dibungkar nongol yang berikutnya yang berikutnya ini nongol ini nongol ini nongol ini nongol ini yang kocok sini ya ini terata ya ini nongol ini terata ini mana? ini yang sudut ini 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 karena pernah dibungkar tanpa penumpang ini ambrol maka dikembalikan sama orang-orang ini kan tapi lah Zaman tahun 43 tentara Jepang datang, mereka juga pengen lihat apa yang ditemukan orang Belanda, tapi nggak sabar, mereka bikin pakai dinamit sama bom untuk membuka ini. Ini kursi batu yang yang asli itu hanya yang hancur. Ini yang sisa sekian persen. Ini atratanya. Ini penutupnya. Penutup atratanya. Ya. Jadi atratanya masih utuh bagus dan nanti kita bisa bedakan ini tidak fokus atau salah tekanan dan melakukan kesalahan. Ya. The true color of Barabudur was discovered during an excavation. Archaeologists found color pigments of blue, red, green, black, as well as gold foil. They concluded that the dark and grey temple seen today is a result of volcanic ash. There are 160 hidden panels in Barabudur which tell independent stories. They each provide a complete illustration of how events happened and what followed. Tanya itu mau fungsi ya, tapi ya. Yang tengah itu dinding. Dua tuanya itu daun sin. The main temple is a stupa built in three tiers, a pyramidal base with five square terraces the trunk of a cone with three circular platforms and at the top a monumental stupa. Around the circular platforms are 72 stupas, each containing the statue of the Buddha. The temple has 25 floors. It remains a mystery how the architects carried rocks and lifted them to the higher floors. The vertical division of Barabudur Temple into base, body, and superstructure perfectly aligns with the conception of the universe in Buddhist cosmology. Itu kalau kita sebut afiliasi teroris internasional dan dibayar. Oke, kita tunjukkan. dengan tiga candi berikut, jadi empat candi segaris nah, pada periode 21 Maret sampai 23 Maret 21 September sampai 23 September matahari terbit pasti segaris dengan empat candi kalau anda melakukan sunrise tour sebelum covid anda naik ke atas ada patokan stupa kecil itu munculnya matahari pas di atas stupa kecil yang ini Ya, jadi ini dulu kesimpulannya orang kita lebih canggih dalam bidang astronomi. Hmm. Iya, hitungannya. Hmm. Jadi hitungan secara arsitek, fisika, semua ilmu, semua ilmu. 
komplek ya. ruang bangunan itu It is believed that the universe is divided into three spheres. The first one is Kamaratu, which represents the sphere of desires where we are bound to our desires. The second sphere is Rupadatu, which represents the sphere of forms where we abandon our desires but are still bound to name and form. And the last one is Arupadatu, which represents the sphere of formlessness where there is no longer either name or form. At Barabudu Temple, the Kamadatu is represented by the base, the Rupadatu by the five square terraces, and the Arupadatu by the three circular platforms, as well as the big monumental stupa at the top. This reminds me of the beauty of Buddha's teachings that I learned back then when I was in high school. The whole structure is also related to the idea of terraced mountain combined with the Buddhist concept of attaining nirvana, which means enlightenment. So, the top big stupa here is no longer available for visitors. I can totally understand considering the age, so I just took a photo in front of it. But hey, at least I have been to that part when I was four. Time to leave! You will need to pass a huge market area before you can eventually reach the parking site. Next stop, Katapas. It is a mountain pass between Mount Merapi and Mount Merbabu. It offers a great point of spectacular view of both mountains. But sadly, it was cloudy and raining when I was there. Katapas is approximately 1,200 meters above the sea level. It is located east of Barabudur, which was why I went there right after leaving Barabudur. Inside the museum, you can see the piece of the stone from Merapi and the miniature of Merapi. Did you know that in 2006, Merapi had the greatest eruption, which took the lives of many people? This site has a small cinema which regularly shows an interesting documentary of Mount Merapi, a restaurant, various food stalls, and a museum of volcanology. This spot is where you can see the thrilling lava of Mount Merapi with naked eyes at night. Another site there is the Pancha Arga which is the highest spot in Katapas. From this spot, five peaks in central Java are visible. They are Mount Merbabu, Mount Merapi, Mount Sindoro, Mount Sumbing, and Mount Slamet. Alright, that wraps up this episode of V3 The Explorer series. I'll see you in the next trip. Bye!